All right. So, um, <clears throat> I've sent this around a bit. I also got sent this link by Fire Lord, um, Kursan, and we're going to have a talk about Warner Brothers. Right. Because from the perspective of Mortal Kombat, uh, like, it, it's, it's kind of like they just have no idea. Right? They poured petrol everywhere, they lit that shit on fire, and they're like, everything's fine. Everything's good, bro. So, uh, during a recent Morgan Stanley speaking event, Warner Brothers Discovery Gaming boss JB Perret discussed some of the company's strategy for gaming going forward. And it includes more live service, mobile, and free-to-play games. Yeah, how that's working out for you. Now, we have had very successful live service games over the years, right? It's just a lot of people don't seem to realize that, and it's things like World of Warcraft, right? Uh, Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, I'm just trying to think of a fairly good prominent shooter. I guess you could say uh, Call of Duty, I guess, I suppose, is another one. Um, even though it looked like they dropped off for a bit, they seem to have come back. The problem is, though, is that <clears throat> when you take something like a fighting game, right, it's very difficult to turn that into a live service, right? Because there is a precedent there that has been set, particularly too by NetherRealm or, or Midway, uh, at least back in the old days when they were decent, uh, for having certain type of content, the way you engage with that content. And then over the years, they have changed that. Now I see a lot of finger pointing going, oh, it's all Warner Brothers fault. I don't agree with that 100%. I, I will continue to say this. No one is being held to ransom here. People have signed their contracts to work for these companies willfully. And in those contracts that would have been overseen by their lawyers, they would have had all the information available, including everything from how you're supposed to do things when it comes to social media and certain things that have to be put into the game, etc., etc. Right? I just like, again, this is why like some of the MK fan base are just they are toxic. They call me toxic for pointing out this crap, but they are the ones that are toxic. They are the rot inside the Mortal Kombat franchise of, of people that love it, that are destroying it as fans because they will accept anything that gets put out. And they'll defend anything that gets said, you know, or, or, or go into bat for these, these people who work at NetherRealm. I, I don't care if they're nice people. That's not the issue here. This is a transaction. They have put out a crap product. I have paid for this product. It is so underwhelmingly woeful. I expect answers. I expect decent results and communication and feedback to be taken seriously. So that way, maybe they can course correct, sort of. I don't think it's possible. But at the very least, the new game can at least end up being really good. He said, we're doubling down on games as an area where we think there is a lot more growth opportunity that we can tap into with the IP that we have some, the capabilities we have on the studio, where we're uniquely positioned as both a publisher and developer of games. You mean destroyer of games. Right. And this is, this is, this is a funny part. I love this bit, right? Because the Game Awards didn't even make jack shit of a mention when it came to Hogwarts. Right, recent gaming output is focused on AAA games for console, and that's great when a game like Hogwarts, well, this PC as well, uh, great like uh, when a game like Hogwarts Legacy sells 22 million copies and becomes the best selling game of the year. And yet, despite that, despite that, you let people run a train on your game, calling it everything from this phobic, that phobic, you know, you didn't come out and defend it. You didn't come out and defend JK Rowling, right? No, 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 no. You let people have a field day. And it had a Streisand effect. The game just blew up and sold, you know, massively. But that's not because they didn't stick up for it. That's got nothing to do with them. It blew up because people wanted to know what was so terrible about this game. And it probably created some new Harry Potter fans because of it. But the company that was pimping out their game now didn't come out and say, listen, right, don't attack the developers. Don't attack this. Don't attack that. You know... There's, there's nothing phobic about a game except for some weirdos on Twitter, right, that haven't been medicated properly. But this kind of success is never guaranteed in what Perrette said. 
It was a volatile market. No, it's volatile because your dumbass company and your dumbass developers keep putting out dumbass games except for the odd one. Hog oh, like Hogwarts Legacy is probably the only IP that Warner Brothers has put out in recent years that has actually done well. And you know why it's done well? Because it's a single player game, right? And they, and they could not mess it up. You know, obviously because the IP is owned, right? Like, like the IP itself, like they still have to confer with JK, it's still her baby. They have to be really careful. Like they gotta be really careful. Otherwise JK could sue them into oblivion. If they mess stuff up and said, hey, hey, <laughs> you can't do this, right? So the plan moving forward, oh hang on, sorry, go back. But this guy's kind of never guaranteed. Uh, he was he pointed out that the Warner Brother uh, W Warner Brother D's latest big games is that Dick uh, latest game big game Suicide Squad Killer Justice League was a big disappointment to the company. Yeah, that and Gotham Knights and Mortal Kombat One. Shall we go on? So the plan moving forward, he said, uh, is to uh, help uh, volatility by focusing on core franchises and bringing at least some of them to the mobile and free to play space. Now, I've talked a little bit about this before. I'm not against a free-to-play model for a fighting game. They've tried in the past. They've done it a little bit with Dead or Alive 5. I think they might have done it with Dead or Alive 6. I can't remember. It's certainly cracking off when it comes to Grand Blue Fantasy vs. Rising. Their free-to-play model has four rotated characters every week. It allows people to get into the game to try out the game mechanics and the, and the characters that are on offer with the four that are available. It also allows them to check out the, the mobile game. Well, not the mobile game. Sorry, the... Um, the, the, the side game of Grand Brews as well. I'm pretty sure it does. I could be wrong, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm on the money with that. So that gives them a really good taste of whether or not this game is something they want to invest in. I'm not against that, okay? Because there's still obviously a lot of restrictions in place. But you have to be careful when you go free to play fully as a product, because how do you approach that? We know we did that with Killer Instinct. They allowed you, I think it was free to play with what, what was it, one character with Jago. Um, and then you could buy the whole game, but it was pretty cheap. Like, so that wasn't too bad. That wasn't too bad at all. So you have to be very careful when it comes to a fighting game, the way that you do this. Because Mortal Kombat 1 should be the poster child that they stick up in the boardroom wall and say, this is not how we do it. The problem is, though, is that they will take all the metrics of people sitting in there in invasions for hours. You know, and going, oh, look at all these people playing Mortal Kombat. They're playing this game for hours every day. They go to their shareholders and they go, see, it's very popular. It's not popular. It's grind. It's arbitrary work for no reason, right? You don't need that kind of grind in a fighting game. You, you can leave it out and other fighting games have proven that. Um... We've already seen, what, at least a couple of, is it a couple of Mortal Kombat games now on mobile? Like, nobody wants to play that shit on a mobile. Just stop, right? If you put out a great product, like what we've seen with Power World, like what we've seen with Helldivers, and their own game, Hogwarts, you put out a great game, people will buy it. It doesn't matter whether, like, in Helldivers 2 is online only. But it was cheaper price. Right, so the entry level is a lot lower. And very simple mechanic, right? Just a team-based game, drop you on a planet, planet, shoot bad guys, right? Have some cool weapons you can unlock, make it all seem very fair and fun, and it works perfectly. They have absolutely nailed it. And it should be one of the metrics moving forward that these companies look at. The Warner Brothers and NetherRealm are particularly greedy and they've been doing this for a while, right? I do not absolve NetherRealm from this case. No one is being held at gunpoint when they do this stuff. They sign contracts, they make the game, they put the stuff in the game, and then they sell the game, and then they're out there pimping the game, and or ignoring issues with the game. Um, he was going to tease that WVD uh, had some new mobile free-to-play game. No one gives a shit. Uh, also worth noting that WV, uh, WVD may push into new places. It doesn't necessarily mean it will stop making big single-player AAA games. Rather than just launching a one and done console game, how do we develop a game around, for example, Hogwarts Legacy or Harry Potter that is a live service where people can live and work and build and play in a world that's ongoing basis? Yeah, but it depends how you do it. 
I've talked about this before, right? You take, you take conquest from deception, right? What you do is you can make that a game that you can play single player or co-op. Actually, you know what? Forget that. Let's go full MMO with conquest mode, right? Because in MMO, you can flag yourself as PvP or PvE. Meaning that if you're running around the world, you could actually have other players attack you. Um, if you have it in PvE, you can see other players running around, but you yourself can still work through the story. You still have cutscenes. You've got other players running around. They can pop in different events, kind of like what they did with the Crypt in MK11, but make it massive world. You could do tons of stuff like that in that particular space there, right? Then you can have all the mini games. Then you have you know everything else that is involved with a Mortal Kombat game. You can have a lobby, you know, that is separate as well. And that I've I, I think I've gone into detail with things like that before. It'd be so easy to make this stuff to add continual content, be it through costumes, you know, that sort of stuff, gear pieces. So, for example, I would I would not have gear pieces anymore for MK characters. I would have Creator Fighter. You know, or the character that you use, that creator fighter could be taken into the conquest mode. You can have tons of gear pieces you can unlock, and also premium items that you could buy. Well priced though. If you price it well, people will get it. I'm not against DLC at all, but you've got to do it right. And you've got to do it in a way that feels like you've already got a full game, and then they're just adding some extra stuff that you may or may not want. Uh, Parade wanted to say that uh, WB has uniquely presented itself because it's popular brands. He singled out Mortal Kombat. Don't start with that shit. Right. You have, you along with Netherrealm have been running Mortal Kombat into the ground since Mortal Kombat 10. Uh, Game of Thrones, Harry Potter and DC. Yeah, but nobody cares about DC anymore. There's, there's too much superhero fatigue. No one gives a shit. No one cares anymore. Right. The movies are failing. The shows are failing. It's all failing. But Warner Brothers, you know, you might want to come up to modern year. Uh, as well as 11 different internal game development studios. Uh, he also teased that Warner Brothers is the strategic investment plan to help make future games more successful. So, we know that they're in trouble financially. This could be a last hurrah. Um, but, personally, for me, I hope we don't see Mortal Kombat for a really long time. I hope all of this com completely collapses and fails. And we actually get a renaissance of great games like what we're seeing with Power World and Helldivers too, but also coming through these companies as well and they wake up. Okay? Every single time that these companies try and go into this market of live service, pay, uh, free to play, it always fails. Right? When MMOs came out, they were charging a box price because World of Warcraft did it so why can't we? But unfortunately though because it is an online only game and if the game doesn't run very good it's login issues, the graphics are terrible, the questing sucks, the combat's boring, the classes are interesting, people won't bother. They just won't give a shit, right? And over the years so many MMOs came out and failed because they tried to charge a box price. They couldn't compete with World of Warcraft they couldn't compete with the likes of Final Fantasy XIV, uh, A Realm Reborn when it came out, still asking for a box price. And a subscription for those two, might I add, right? But at the very least, you could argue that they're continually adding content. And also a lot of quality of life updates and stuff as well that you can get uh, if you don't, say, own uh, like the newest expansions and stuff like that. But MMOs had to go to the free-to-play model because they couldn't survive. So then they had to make sure that they made a good solid game that you can log in for free but there are some restrictions possibly or they would make it so that there's a, a cash shop you got a hybrid of those sorts of things with Guild Wars 2 and Guild Wars 1 where you actually paid a box price but there was no subscription fee um, and then I think Guild Wars 1 it was later on in life they started to bring in some shop items uh, outfits and sort of like shortcuts to unlock skills and stuff and then Guild Wars 2 they fully implemented the cash shop with the Black Lion Trading Company. Uh, and then, you know, because there's a free-to-play model as well, now, um, they've obviously got to make revenue somehow. And that's fine, right? That's fine because the game itself has established itself. It's already got a ton of content already. This is just to try and keep it moving forward. You've got to be very, very, very careful. And with a fighting game, there are standards in place here. 
There are standards in place, right? Uh, if Warner Brothers can execute, Perret said he expects gaming to bring meaningful growth to the company in the years to come. Well, what's meaningful growth? More customers? Because that's not going to happen if you continue going down the path you have. How does Arkham City look better than Suicide Squad? Right? You have failed. And that's the reason why a lot of people are also talking about Sweet Baby Inc., which he won't mention at all in here, in this article whatsoever. But we also know that uh, they have been heavily involved with them for a very long time. Because we've seen the state of every... Like, for my best example that I can give on this channel is Mortal Kombat. Right? Laying the foundation now for returns that could come in 25, 26, and 27. Perret went on to say he has no idea how big the, how the gaming landscape will evolve over time, but at least owning the IP and studios could help Warner Brothers succeed where others might not. I prefer that you sell off some of these IPs and give it to, to developers that actually understand the audience. Right? Warner Brothers' upcoming games include Harry Potter Quidditch game and a Wonder Woman title from the makers of Shadow of Mordor. Um, again, that'll be interesting though, because like Shadow of Mordor and Shadow of War were great games, although Shadow of War they brought in loot boxing, which was an absolute catastrophe. And then like people with trainers were like, well, we'll just get around this. It's a single player game, what are you doing, right? So they so they would loot box the trainers, endless, endless loot boxes, because they're like, why are you serious? You really want us to pay for this shit in a single player game? So that was a massive L on that. Uh, and then if they're going to try and take that technology with the Nemesis system and stuff like that into like a Wonder Woman title, who knows? We know the shields for Warner Brothers out there are actually going to cream their panties over it, which is going to be, oh, I just I can't wait for that, right? Because they're part of the problem, as I said. The people that encourage this sort of stuff, well, this is the problem, right? Uh, Warner Brothers' approach to gaming is very different at Disney. The company years ago developed and published games in-house, but now licenses its franchises to other companies. For example, Disney just paid Epic $1.5 billion to bring its franchises to Fortnite. Disney is also working for a variety of companies, uh, yeah, to destroy. Oh, EA, Ubisoft, no shock there. Zynga, Quantic Dream on Star Wars games. And has a deal with Microsoft Bethesda for Indiana Jones and the Great Circle and of Woke and Blade. Right? Again, like, I have no trust and faith in Warner Brothers and NetherRealm because I've seen the way that, that Mortal Kombat has absolutely been handled. Now just to finalize, right, because I, I know it's a long video, um, but I want to sort of showcase something as well uh, because this this kind of kind of bugs me a, a little bit. Um, just trying to find it. Where is it? Here we go. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. Yeah, here we go, right? So, <clears throat> so it's this one, it's this one here, right? <clears throat> so Shinobi602 points out, he goes, Warner Brothers sees his future game strategy to involve more live service mobile and free-to-play games, right? Uh, I think that's just, you know, this is terrible. Like it, like pretty much. There's a universal agreement here that this is the dumbest thing you could ever do. And then Max comes in and goes, "I'm legit feeling for NRS right now. I don't. I, you know what I like? You know what I like? You know what I like? I like it when I'm supposed to feel sorry for the developers who have been fired for putting out their woke activist crap." I'm never going to feel sorry for you, just so we're clear, right? You choose to do this. You choose to make this garbage, and then you cry about it when you get your ass handed to you. Pink slip off your pop. Get lost, right? I don't feel sorry for people like that, because you knew what you were doing. You were involved, you knew what you were doing, and that's the end of it. I'm not going to be gaslit into feeling bad for people that we're trying to destroy something that has been well established for so long with things like Batman and all sorts of stuff over the years, everything, Mortal, uh, Mortal Kombat I'm not going to feel sorry for people like that why should I? you got paid you got a boatload of money to make this garbage and it doesn't sell because people don't want to buy garbage and therefore you're going to cry about it because you got fired? no Maybe you'd have should have thought about that. 
look down the road and see where this is going to end up. No, but you just thought, you just thought with your pride. You thought your pride. Oh yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm righteous in this. I'm going to lecture these gamers on all of this sort of stuff. And then you're high, sweet baby ink. And it all falls apart and you wonder why. And then you want sympathy. No. Mm -mm. There are consequences. These are consequences. You get in bed with the devil, what do you think's gonna happen? Anyway guys, I'll leave it there. Uh, let me know what you think. I know he says here with the uh, best for MK1 in the future. No, I, I don't think it's gonna turn around. Anyway guys, catch you next time.